My name is Substitute, and if you're looking for an introduction on Applied Energistics 2's Channels and Cable System, you found the right video. The first thing you have to understand when building an ME system is channels. A vast majority of devices in Applied Energistics needs a channel. You can tell a device has a channel by looking in the top middle of the screen. It will say Device Online if it has a valid channel. All of the cables in Applied Energistics carry channels. The Flux and the Smart Cables both carry 8 channels. However, on the Smart Cables you can see how many channels are being used at once. This is where it really helps to have a HUD mod like Jade or the One Probe. This will show you how many channels are being used in your system simply by looking at the cable. Alternatively, the cables also visually indicate how many channels are being used based on the number of lines being shown. The number of channels in your ME system is determined by how your controller is set up. If your system does not have an ME controller, it is considered an ad hoc system and can only hold 8 channels. Dense cables are used in conjunction with the ME controller to carry up to 32 channels. The only downside to the dense cables is their high cost and the fact that they cannot connect to subparts. More will be explained about subparts later in the video. Let's recap on everything we've covered so far. Feel free to screenshot this image, or you can find a download for it in the description below, along with other resources you might find helpful relating to this video. While you're there, consider subscribing so you can see more videos. It is important to note that each face of the controller has separate channels you can use. So with dense cables, you can theoretically have 32 channels on every face of the controller. If you're interested in getting as much out of Applied Energistics 2 as possible, be sure to check out my Practical ME Controller Designs, linked in the description. Another part of effective cable management is dyeing the cables themselves. By dyeing the cables, you prevent them from connecting to colours other than their own. Flux cables, on the other hand, can connect to any colour. Another way of managing cables is using cable anchors. These subparts act as a barrier between same coloured cables. Subparts are a powerful and essential part of AE2. In this video, we will cover the facade, the anchor, and the quartz fibre. For more information on any of these, refer to my subparts video. Facades can connect to any cable and can be made from any block. These look great for aesthetic purposes and can also connect to other subparts. However, something to note is that facades do not stop connections to other cables. You have to use a cable anchor to separate them if you want to prevent a connection. And finally, the quartz fibre. The quartz fibre is a unique subpart in applied energistics in that it can transfer energy but it does not carry ME channels. A connection like this usually indicates a sub-network, a network that is receiving power from the main network, but is not connected directly. Sub-networks can be a very complicated topic to explain in a short time. I have an entire video dedicated to it, linked in the description. Hi, and thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. The best way you can support me is by liking the video, subscribing, and sharing it with other people. I hope this video has given you a better understanding of channels and cables in AE2. I'll see you again soon.